Hey guys, this is part two of how massage can be used to improve your posture. Last week we talked about from the waist down how we can balance out the muscles there, the hip flexors, the glutes, making sure that the front's not too tight and the abdominals aren't too weak. So combining some of those things with an appropriate exercise program. That needs to be done by somebody like a physical therapist. In this week, what we're going to do is we're going to focus from the, the waist up. We're going to look at how you can get out of this kind of posture and, how, and, and look at how Yanda's uh, upper cross syndrome is, is used in that uh, classification as well and what you can do, the certain muscles that you can have released in order to improve that. Now again, I always have to make the disclaimer, please, everybody is not the same. You still need to be individually assessed. I'm coming at this from a typical pattern that we see in 85 to 90 percent of people that are working a sedentary desk job or are all over computers all day long and their head is being sucked into a monitor. So thinking of that, there are some components that we, we see commonly. What did we say last week, guys? Last week we looked at the lower cross syndrome and we saw that the glutes were weak, the Thoracal lumbar extensors in the low back are tight, trying to compensate. The abdominals are weak, and the hip flexors in the front of your hip are tight. So now we're looking on the upper body. You, you know, that was the foundation. You always address that. Make sure you're addressing that, because you can't fix the upper body. The neck, like if you have a forward head posture, this is not the only problem. You gotta look further down the chain because we're in a closed loop system here. So you have to make sure that you're addressing the lower body as well as your neck. Okay, so make sure you check out last week's video if you haven't already, and then put some of those things into practice. Now, what we can think about is the upper body. So I'm gonna put that diagram back up on the screen here, and we've got the upper cross syndrome. Upper cross syndrome is composed of the following. We're gonna have tight, pec muscles, so the front is going to be short. The deep cervical flexors are going to be long. They're going to be stretched out and weak. The deep cervical extensors are going to be short in the back. So we're like this. Your head is still trying to keep you, your gaze, straight ahead so it's looking this way, so it shortens back here, it gets long and weak here. And then also, on the back side, all your shoulder, your scapular support muscles are going to get weak, so your shoulders will start to roll forward. If you have forward rolled shoulders, you, you know, it's not just about getting the shoulders back, it's also about elongating the spine. So that's where Pilates is great for this kind of stuff. But Strictly from the massage and deep tissue standpoint that we talk, we were talking about, we need to make sure that we're opening up the front, we're releasing the diaphragm right below the rib cage, we are opening up the pecs, and this whole line, even down into the bicep, fascial kind of work where it's deep, myofascial release, opening up all these muscles from your, almost to your sternum, your pec major all the way down into your biceps and even right underneath your clavicles by your subclavius muscles so it's not pinning your shoulders down here. If you feel your collarbones and you feel right under them, you'll probably feel some really nasty little knots under there that are really sore. That's your subclavius. Go ahead and feel that for a minute. If you go to your sternum and then you just kind of feel next to each rib, you'll start to feel the pec major and deep to that under your armpit is your pec minor which gets really tight and pulls your shoulders forward like this. So we have to be able to open this so the shoulders can set down the spine. A massage therapist or a physical therapist might do some work on the back of the neck to help elongate that out and allow the head to set back on the spine. That's critically important and then of course again you'll have to retrain some of the muscles in the front, which I've shown in some of my other videos like uh, fixing a text neck or cell phone posture. I'll, I'll, put, that, I'll put that up in the, uh, in the corner there. So check that out if you know, you're always 
a text neck kind of person like this too. That's, an, that's another issue that's, that's similar to this. So those are the main tissues that need to be focused on if you have the forward head posture and rounded shoulders. And then of course, you're gonna want to, if you really want those things to stay, you know, I always ask my clients, how long do you wanna feel better? Because I can massage you, I can release these tissues, I can mobilize you, I can manipulate you, I can do all these different things to your body, but then you have the responsibility in the long term. You are going to be with yourself 24 hours a day. If I'm seeing someone in therapy, I may see them for three hours a week at most. You are with yourself 24 hours a day. So who do you think is going to have the biggest influence? Of course you are. So after we're done with this kind of body work, we've kind of opened the door of potential here, then it's time for you to start retraining some of those postural muscles. And that is well beyond the scope of this video. But of course, if you are interested, uh, check out some of my other videos. I mean, this whole series is about posture, so you'll find all kinds of goodies if you look in our other Working Body Wednesday videos, which trains you how to understand this, the anatomy, the musculature, the kind of things that you need to do to get better. So I'd love to hear in the comments section below, time for your sharing. What are you struggling with with your upper body? Are you having this forward head posture? Do you have the rounded shoulders? What have you done to change that? Have you changed your work environment? Have you got deep tissue work of any kind, whether it's like Rolfing or Gua Sha, uh, Graston, uh, you know, myofascial release, deep tissue massage, any of those things. What have you done to help some of these tissues improve? And then what have you done to keep them there? Whether it's yoga, Pilates, whatever it is, I'd love to hear about it. I've learned so much from you guys just from reading the comments. So let's all share and help each other. If you enjoyed this video, of course, be sure to subscribe if this is your first time to the channel and hit the little bell so you never miss another video. YouTube only sends like certain notifications. So if you like these kind of videos, you got to hit the bell to get all the videos and then share it with a friend that you think would benefit as well. Thanks so much for joining me guys. Tomorrow I will be back with Learn Your Body Thursdays, the series where we're going from uh, toe up to the head, every joint, giving you practical advice on how you can preserve your joints and improve the health of your joints as well. We are going to be on the hip tomorrow, so be sure to check that out. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Have a fantastic day, guys.